Overwatch 2 is a team-based hero shooter with multiple core modes that you can play with a huge roster of characters. If you're new to Overwatch 2, haven't played the original game in a long time, or just want to brush up your knowledge on the damage roster, this video should give you an idea of which damage heroes you may want to play based off your playstyle. Damage in Overwatch 2 is often referred to as DPS, which is an acronym for damage per second. And it's a term you're going to hear a ton throughout this video. As DPS, your goal should be to output more damage than the enemy team. However, raw damage alone is sometimes not enough. Playing against good support players, they're going to outheal your damage. So this will make them priority targets when an opportunity presents itself to take them out. As DPS, you're going to need to focus your damage on key targets for your team. However, depending on the DPS you're playing will determine which targets need to focus and where you need to position yourself in order to do so. The main thing I can say is that every damage hero plays differently and that for the most part, they are either a hit scan or projectile hero. Hit scan means that a character's primary method for damage output is directly at the center of your crosshair. So if your target is directly on the other side of your reticle, they are taking damage. Projectile means that your character physically throws out a projectile that travels over time until it reaches its target. Understanding this difference is critical because some players are better with projectile heroes than they are hit scan and vice versa. Becoming a flexible DPS player and learning heroes that do both kinds of damage is going to make your job as DPS more consistent and a lot easier. I'm now going to talk about each of the different damage heroes so you can decide which ones interest you and when you may want to use them. Before I start the video, I just want to say thanks for all the support the last couple Overwatch 2 videos I've posted and I'm hoping to keep the content coming however so. I live stream on Twitch each week and I'd love to hang out with y'all, link in the description below. First, let's talk about the leader of the infamous deadlock gang, Ash. With the Viper and Bob at her side, Ash likes to keep her enemies where she likes them, at a distance and exposed. Her primary weapon is hit scan and it has two firing modes, scope and unscope. Her weapon is 12 shots total. When she's unscope and firing from the hip, her weapon has a higher firing rate but slightly less damage. When she's scope, her weapon aims down its sights, zooming in and does more damage. Keep in mind that her weapon has damage fall off no matter what firing mode you're in, but that the range damage falls off is different for each firing mode. Her dynamite ability is a strong tool that can be used used to deal a ton of AoE damage. It's also good for winning duels against single opponents as well. When Ash throws out her dynamite, it's set on a short fuse to explode or immediately if she shoots it. The center of the explosion itself does instant damage, but if enemies are still close enough to the threshold of the explosion itself, they'll be set on fire with damage over time. It's a great ability to throw above a team and detonate early to spread out damage to the enemy team, apply pressure, or create opportunities for the team. Her coach gun ability is a great tool to create distance between Ash and an opponent too close or she can use it for mobility. The damage of the coach gun itself is mediocre at a distance, but up close can do about 90 damage. The real value to this ability is its knockback and utility to reach higher ground with vertical mobility. Her ultimate ability, Bob, is a physical character that lands to her side, runs forward, launching the first person he contacts upward into the air, and then essentially locks onto a single target at a time with automatic fire. He can also contest objectives or hold them for his team. Using Bob is a huge boost for winning team fights as it pressures the team with an extra enemy to deal with and the automatic fire he has helps out with cleaning up low HP enemies. Ash is a great pick for players with great aim, can focus key targets from a distance, and can spread out enough damage for the team with her dynamo and Bob. Cassidy, our second gunslinger of the roster, is a simple damage hero whose main damage output is hit scan. He uses a six shooter revolver that is very effective at medium range. His primary fire is a single shot that deals decent damage and good for focusing targets out of position and exposed. His secondary fire fan the hammer and loads all of his bullets wildly in a random pattern that's most suitable for close range. Combat rolls an ability that rolls in whatever direction Cassidy is moving and reloads his weapon. Being that his revolver is his core damage, this ability will save you time from reloading during key moments and also give you the distance you need to be at range where needed. For enemies that get too close, throwing out his magnetic grenade ability to a nearby enemy will attach it to them, dealing good damage, allowing for an easy follow-up. It's really strong against nimble or agile heroes like Genji or Lucio since it can attach to them. 
Once he's found a good position with the strong angle, it's time for his ultimate ability, High Noon, which upon activation locks onto all enemies in range until he's able to do enough damage to one-shot enemies in view. It's a great zoning ultimate that makes a ton of space for his team, and for those that can't find cover, it's an easy pick especially against supports. Even if you could pick a single target with Cassidy's High Noon, it's better than being greedy and getting none. Cassidy is overall a simple hero to play mechanically, but becomes harder to use at higher competitive matches. Focus down vulnerable squishy 200 HP targets with your primary fire to get the most value out of him. Genji, our agile cybernetic ninja that always needs healing, is a projectile based flanker that puts pressure on vulnerable targets, snipers, and finishes off low HP enemies. He's definitely a favorite among DPS players for the mobility and utility that can be taken from his kit. Let's talk about his passives first. Genji can double jump and wall climb, even if hacked. This allows Genji to be a bit more crafty in how he navigates the map and approaches his engagements. His main damage output are his shurikens which can be fired in two different ways. His primary attack throws shuriken one after the other in a line of sorts, whereas his secondary attack sort of fans them out in front of him horizontally. Each of his projectiles travel over time so you'd have to lead your shuriken and predict where the enemy will be by the time your shuriken reach them. His swift strike ability is a medium distance dash that sends Genji in whatever direction he's facing and damaging any enemies caught within the dash. The cooldown on this ability is reset for any eliminations he's a part of. Keep that in mind because if you do damage an enemy after swift striking and your teammate finishes them off that still resets your swift strike cooldown allowing you to use it again it's a really great tool to finish off enemies get in close or get out of a bad situation his deflect ability is a defensive ability that deflects any projectiles or hit scan back toward wherever genji is facing it even deflects enemy ultimate projectiles too so keep that in mind his ultimate ability dragon blade changes genji's damage to melee taking out his katana after a brief animation, resetting his swift strike and allowing him to deal with heavy damage. When comboed together with ultimates like Nano Boost, Graviton Surge, or Kiriko's ultimate, it has potential to get a lot of value from. He's a fun hero to play and I recommend picking this one up if you're looking to try out DPS. Hanzo, Genji's brother, is an agile archer who's vowed never to touch a sword again after slaying his brother. Instead, this Shimada brother's primary form of damage output is through his bow. His arrows, when fully charged, do 125 damage per arrow and can insta-kill squishies if he lands a headshot. With his bow, he's meant to get picks ahead of a team fight, making enemies respect his line of sight and to keep their distance. His passive ability, similar to his brother, also allows him to wall climb, but instead of a double jump, he has an ability of sorts that allows him to jump a second time horizontally to either create some distance or dash quickly to cover. He also has two other types of arrows, sonic arrows and arrow that reveal enemy locations through walls, making them visible for the team. It'll also follow a particular hero if you hit them with the arrow. Storm arrows have five shots that can be fired in quick succession but do slightly less damage. His ultimate ability Dragon Strike allows him to launch a deadly dragon spirit that can travel through walls and obstacles damaging anyone caught within. It deals a ton of damage if used correctly and is capable of taking out multiple enemies, but be mindful because enemies can hear Hanzo summoning the spirit before it's actually used, so you're gonna want to use the ability from an angle they may not be able to dodge or expect. In the right hands, Hanzo feels unkillable. Players with godly aim are gonna love this hero. Try not to focus on enemy shields too much with him, he offers so much more value when you find angles to shoot your arrows to more vulnerable squishy targets. Aim for the head and I encourage y'all to try him out. Junkrat is a wild and explosive character to play. He can deal a ridiculous amount of damage and is very beginner friendly for new DPS players. He has the passive ability to not take any damage from any of his explosives and if he dies, he drops six frags at his position. This comes in handy because his entire kit is revolved around his explosions. His primary damage output is through his drag launcher which if you're familiar with games like Quake or other arena shooters will come natural to some. Each of the frags he launches from his weapon deals 120 damage directly and can also do splash damage to nearby enemies. He can put a lot of pressure on enemy shields with this and is able to deny space to the enemy team. Typically you want to choose a space you don't want the enemy to go through and lob it with frags to get picks or punish them for passing through. The frags bounce off of walls and stuff so keep that in mind when shooting them to potentially get some damage off on unaware squishies. When paired together with his Concussion Mind ability, anyone hit directly with one of his frags will get eliminated. Concussion Mind is a projectile that Junkrat can throw and detonate at any moment. It can do up to 120 damage at the center of the explosion, but has damage fall off from that center. 
It also has a knockback effect that can crowd control enemies or even launch Junkrat. He can have up to two mines on his person at a time, but if you throw one down somewhere on the map, you can still pocket two other mines on his person. He also has a steel trap ability that actually does a lot of damage when an enemy steps into it with a flat 100 damage. It renders its target immobile for three seconds and if paired with the minor frag, will eliminate them. Keep in mind these traps can be destroyed, so place them in locations where enemies may not expect. A common practice I like to do is to place them directly on top of payloads because people like to jump on them. It's perfect for taking out Lucio's or mobile heroes. His rip tire ultimate ability allows Junkrat to take control of an explosive tire that he can pilot to full send into an enemy or a group of enemies, dealing up to 600 damage. It's a team killer when used to take out multiple enemies and it always forces people to find cover. The tire can climb walls as well, so death row above is always a viable option. But keep in mind, people can destroy it if exposed. This also renders Junkrat himself vulnerable on the map, so you don't want to be in his tire for too long. He's a great character to deal easy damage to, and if you can get better at hitting squishies with your regular frags, you'll get a ton of value from him. Just look out for enemy Faras, as that's his biggest counter in the game. Mei is an icy cold scientist ready to freeze her enemies and support her team. She's got one of the more unique kits of the damage category, but played well, the enemy team will find her difficult to take out. I will say, her method of damage output is very different than most heroes, so don't expect her to have high damage values. It's the value she brings in her kit for her team that makes her dangerous. Her primary fire is a constant spray of sorts that deals damage and slows enemies caught within the spray. Slowing them down can help her teammates hit targets easier and line up their headshots. Her secondary fire shoots out icicles as projectiles after a short delay for instant damage. These icicles can be fired long range but mostly effective at medium range. The true value out of Mei's kit is in her ice walls. Using these walls, she can break her enemy's line of sight, split off enemies from each other, save her team when used defensively, or lift herself or others up to higher ground. Different sections of the wall can be destroyed and she can change the orientation of the wall itself. Splitting off enemies from their team is a constant threat, so be smart about how you use these walls. Her cryo freeze ability covers me in a block of ice that heals her over time and she's invulnerable during this time. However, after a short period, the ice automatically breaks, revealing me. It's a good ability to use when she's in a dangerous situation and needs time to heal up or protect herself. Her ultimate ability, Blizzard, causes Mei to throw out a projectile that upon touching the ground creates a large radius that will freeze anyone caught inside for a short period. Targets frozen will be unable to move, vulnerable, and exposed for easy damage. Not gonna lie, Mei has a pretty high skill ceiling to do well with. She's got a little bit of everything in her kit when it comes to tanking, DPS, and even support. So finding that right balance will be key to playing her well and bringing out value from her kit. Echo is a versatile futuristic robot that's been programmed to take out as many enemies as possible on the battlefield. She can adopt different playstyles which allows for a lot of flexibility on the player's playstyle, but the burden of her responsibility as a damage dealer does not change. Her primary weapon shoots out projectiles in a triangle. These can be tricky to hit at times while aerial, but they travel faster than most projectiles. Her secondary fire sticky bombs allows her to shoot out six bombs that can attach to opponents and detonate after a short delay. It's nice if you can stick these to an enemy because because comboing this with her primary weapon is enough to take out an opponent. Her core ability flight allows her to surge forward and fly throughout the air for a brief period. She can also glide through the air even when this ability is inactive and you're pressing your jump binding. Her best ability is arguably her focusing beam, which shoots out a laser beam that does a considerable amount of damage to targets lower than 50% health. The beam has a decent range and it is to be respected if her target is below 50% of their HP. Her ultimate ability duplicate allows her to duplicate an enemy, use all of their abilities match their skin, and has increased ultimate charge rate, allowing her to recruit an ultimate as a duplicated enemy rather quickly. Your bindings and sensitivity for whatever hero you duplicate will also apply, so don't worry about that. She's a high skill cap hero in my opinion as her viability is directly tied to the player's knowledge of all of the heroes in the game. But with the knowledge and skill, you can definitely bring value to the team. Farah is the queen of the skies and prefers to stay that way, raining justice from above and making it hell for everyone beneath. This 
This monster, if left unchecked by enemy hitscan, will run rampant and carry her team to victory. First, let's talk her passive ability, Hover Jets. Simply holding her secondary fire will allow her to hover in air, granting her upward velocity when held down. It's perfect to use after her jump jet ability, an ability that launches her upward very high at a fast speed. Utilizing her mobility for control in the high ground will be essential in your success as her. Her primary method for damage output is through a rocket launcher, which in its name is self-explanatory for what it does. Rockets fired from her weapon deal a ton of damage if you can land direct hits and offer no headshot damage. Each rocket also has explosive splash damage, so if you're unable to hit your target head on, at least landing your rockets nearby them will also do decent damage. Her ultimate ability barrage essentially holds fire in a current position, whether on ground or in midair, and unleashes an overwhelming amount of rockets in whatever direction she's facing, covering a large area. Be mindful that Farah is not immune to damage from her own rockets, so she can accidentally take herself out if not careful. The more you become an issue for the enemy team, will cause them to switch to hit scan to take you out. So you want to hug cover and start poking more when that happens. But she's a perfect counter to Junkrat. Definitely beginner friendly hero, so have fun with her. Reaper is our favorite edgelord turned high functioning psychopath. He is a tank busting brawler that is extremely lethal at close range. His primary weapon are both of his hellfire shotguns. They have a massive spread and deal the full amount of damage up close. This damage falls off immensely at greater distances. Keep in mind his shots are hit scanned, so they will connect with whoever is on the other side of your crosshair. What makes Reaper work so well is his passive ability, the Reaping. It is essentially a lifesteal. Whatever damage he does to his enemies, he regenerates to his health, keeping him alive longer in battle. This passive makes him a powerful tank buster because it increases his brawling capabilities to keep him up close toward his opponents as he does damage. His shadow step ability allows him to teleport directly to where his aura is after a short period. It's great for flanking opportunities or places to reposition. His Wraith form ability also allows him to become invulnerable and increase his speed for a couple seconds. It's a great tool to get out of a bad situation and a way for his supports to heal him up. His ultimate ability is Death Blossom and it's quite literally that. Upon activation, Reaper becomes a cyclone of damage dealing heavy damage to all enemies nearby. When paired up with certain abilities that grant him more damage or speed, he can become a literal Beyblade. I consider Reaper a strong character for mid-tier level matchups, but is harder to use at higher levels of play. Otherwise, a great character for beginners and very straightforward. Sojourn is the newest damage hero to come to Overwatch 2. Players familiar with Call of Duty or Apex Legends will find the transition between games very easy with her playstyle. Her primary form of damage is through her weapon itself, which has two firing modes. The first firing mode shoots out projectiles with automatic fire that charge up the damage for her railgun secondary fire. When fully charged up, the damage from her secondary fire is enough to do about 150 damage, but is an insta-kill when getting a headshot on 200 HP enemies. Opening fire on the enemy to deal decent damage, then finishing them off with her railgun will be a key combo in finishing squishies. Her power slide ability is a ground slide that is a lot similar to sliding in Apex Legends, but it instead gives you a high jump boost if you jump during the slide. It's a great mobility tool to reach higher ground, but also to escape bad situations. Her Disruptor Shot ability launches an energy burst that slows enemies and does decent damage over time. Her ultimate ability, Overclock, supercharges her railgun during a short period and gives Soldier in time to dish out enough multiple fully charged railgun shots. Also a good ledger to play for beginners and very much viable at all ranks. Get good with her railgun secondary fire and you'll bring a ton of value to her team. Soldier 76 is going to be a retired combat veteran. Like Soldier, and if you're familiar with Apex or Call of Duty, he's going to come very natural to you. He's a frontline hero carrying an automatic rifle that can cover his team and output a lot of damage at range. He's a hit scan hero so his bullets are not projectiles and they are instantaneous. His secondary fire are his helix rockets, which shoot out a burst of small explosives and deal a good amount of damage and have explosive damage so it can hurt himself. One of his core abilities is going to be his sprint ability. He can use it whenever activated and it speeds up his movement by 50%. He cannot use his other abilities while sprinting. When himself or his teammates reach low health, he can pop his biotic field ability to throw throw down a healing circle that will heal any teammates within line of sight of his healing tool and within its radius. Fortunately, this can't be destroyed so it's very helpful in critical situations. His ultimate ability Tactical Visor essentially automatically locks onto targets within line of sight and his weapon becomes an aimbot, causing him not to miss any shots. His Helix Rocket still shoots at enemies locked on, but it's not guaranteed to hit. He's fairly simple to play, simply position yourself with your tank or in a strong position while, the, while your other DPS flanks 
or picks off targets. Sombra is going to be your non-stop hacking harasser, constantly suppressing enemy abilities and making her targets vulnerable for the team. Her primary form of damage is going to be through her machine pistol, which is a submachine gun with a decent amount of spread and is also hit scan. She possesses a translocator that can be thrown out and placed where she pleases, which upon reactivation of the ability teleports her to wherever her translocator is. This ability can be destroyed, so be mindful of where you place it. Typically you want to keep it at your team's support line to assist your support players if necessary and keep you with the team. Her stealth ability allows her to become completely invisible and gain additional movement. She can reload her weapons and translocate, maintaining complete stealth. Her hack ability is the main value out of her kit. It allows her to prevent an enemy from using their ability for a temporary amount of time and see them through walls. She can also hack health packs and enemy abilities such as immortality field, Bob or Torbjorn turrets. If timed properly, she's even able to hack enemies out of their open abilities if you know when they're coming. Thanks to her passive ability Opportunist, she's able to deal increased damage to hack targets and can see critically low enemies through walls. Keep an eye out for this because she can easily clean up low HP enemies with her assassin sort of playstyle. Her ultimate ability EMP is easily charged up and unleashes a large EMP for the center of Sombra, affecting a large radius hacking all enemies caught within. It's perfect to combo with other ultimate abilities and should be used to take out two or more enemies. She's a high skill cap hero and will be annoying to play against if she continues to disrupt the enemy team's abilities. So just picking her up that she's really fun and valuable once you've mastered her hack. Symmetra is a very defensive legend that's good in protecting her teammates from the most lethal heroes and supporting her team with teleporters. Her core ability sentry turret sends out a small turret that damages and slows enemies. She can have up to three out at once and they stick to whatever surface it comes into contact with. It's pretty strong against heroes like Genji. Her teleport her ability allows her to create two teleporters that enable her team to travel between both portals. It's a good portal to set up for her team to reach advantageous positions or even up to get back a bit sooner from spawn to the objective. And she can send her turrets through the portals as well. She has two forms of damage that come out from her weapon. The first is a laser beam that charges up with more damage over time as she does damage and it can take out a ton of enemies if they're not cautious. Her secondary fire is a projectile that does decent damage when charged up and sent to the enemy. Her ultimate ability Photon Barrier creates a massive energy barrier that cuts through the entire map and cannot be destroyed. As Symmetra, you want to be mildly creative in where you place your turrets because the more predictable your turrets are, the less effective and deadly they are to the enemy team. You want to keep them guessing around which corners they're place. Torbjorn is a damage dealer capable of setting up an auto turret and he can use to deal additional damage next to his abilities. His rivet gun is a slow firing long range weapon that shoots out a projectile of the trajectory of an arc. His secondary fire is a short range shotgun. He also possesses a forge hammer that he can use to repair his turret or deal damage to enemies. That brings us toward his ability to deploy turrets. He can toss it out making him capable of chucking it to higher ground and the turret itself auto locks its aim toward targets and range similar to Bob. His overload ability increases his movement, reload speed, and fire rate with his weapon and, and hammer, granting additional health as well. In the right instance, he can deal a ton of damage unexpectedly. His Molten Core ultimate allows him to shoot out a ton of Molten Lava that can cover a wide area damaging enemies, dealing additional damage to armor, and has a lingering damage effect similar to Ash's Dynamite. He's a strong defensive hero able to protect his team however possible. Set up his turrets at off angles so that that's not as easy for the enemy team to destroy and to keep the pressure off his team's support or agile heroes. Tracer has got to be the fastest DPS hero in the game. She's a time traveling flanker with ridiculous speed and flanking ability. Her kit is relatively simple, but she's a high skill cap hero to be successful with. Her only form of damage output is from her pulse pistols. Her pistols fire rapidly unleashing a heavy amount of damage up close, but it falls off the further away enemies are. Her core ability is her blink. It allows her to teleport horizontally in whatever direction she's moving. She can have up to three blinks at a time with a three second cooldown between her charges added to her blinks. She can have up to three blinks at a time with a three second cooldown before a charge is added to her blinks. She has three blinks total. Try not to use them all or Tracer can be very vulnerable since she only has 150 HP. Try to save her last blink for emergencies. Her recall ability is her escape ability. It allows her to recall to her position 3 seconds ago with whatever health she had at the time 
unless she's healed. It gives her the opportunity to try again. Use this ability only if you need to, or wasting it can set her up for failure. As Tracer, try to focus on flanking vulnerable characters, doing heavy damage, and backing out. She's also pretty good at finishing off low HP or damaged enemies. Widowmaker is an extremely lethal sniper that all players must respect if the Widow is hitting her shots. Her weapon has two forms of damage and they're both hit scan. Firing from the hip with her weapon makes it act like an assault rifle. The damage is not the best, but it can be enough to finish off a target extremely low if she can't get her snipe off. Holding her secondary fire will take out a sniper scope and charge her next shot which can do up to 120 damage to the body and with a headshot can insta kill anyone with 250 HP or less. Making headshots with this ability will be critical to her success and bring her team the most value. Her grappling hook ability allows her to reach higher ground to take strong positions for sniping or to quickly reposition to her team in dangerous scenarios. Her venom mine ability allows her to throw a mine that triggers from nearby enemies the damage poisons enemies over time and allows her to see poisoned enemies through walls. Keep in mind the enemies can also destroy these mines, so place it in a position where it's hard for them to dodge whilst also alerting her where the enemy is. Her ultimate ability, Infersight, allows her entire team to see enemies through walls. The ability is cancelled if Widowmaker is eliminated. The hero excels at taking enemies out by getting picks for her team, but she is heavily reliant on her team to keep her alive. Finally, Bastion is a very fun killer robot able to output heavy damage for his team. Being Seeing that Bastion is disabled at the time of this video, I'm going to be using some footage from Bastion Me, the number one Bastion on PC, to explain his abilities. I'll be linking his YouTube channel below. Bastion's primary fire while in his core configuration recon is essentially a highly accurate rifle similar to Soldier 76's pulse rifle as hitscan. When his configuration is an assault, he essentially becomes a slow moving tank with a minigun that can output a ridiculous amount of damage. His core ability reconfigure allows him to switch configurations. Bastion is also capable of tossing out a tactical grenade that can bounce off walls and explode when it hits enemies on the ground. It can deal a decent amount of damage, so be mindful of how you use it. His ultimate ability, Artillery, allows him to to essentially shoot mortar missiles to specific positions on the map. He's a great hero for outputting heavy damage for teams bunkered up and should be considered a tank buster. He's also beginner friendly to try, so pick him up. Overall, DPS is my favorite role in Overwatch, and I'm happy to help explain each of these heroes for y'all to choose from. Let me know in the comments below who interests you the most. Please like and subscribe for more Overwatch content, and follow me on Twitch for awesome live streams. And if you're thinking about trying out tanker support, I've got videos for those heroes as well. Check them out if you haven't already. Take it easy, and peace out.